Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about another place and another time, a place and time that would never exist today. So 1974, um, uh, I'm a little kid, I'm about 145 pounds, I'm about 13 years old, and I'm number one in the nation in Olympic weightlifting. And I'm training at a place called Walt's Gym in Hayward, California. I believe it was on Mission Boulevard. Now, Walt's gym was converted from a chicken coop in the 1950s, made into a gym. This gym would not exist today. First of all, this gym had exercise equipment in it that was a joke. It had this machine with a strap, and you put the strap around your waist, and you just lean against the strap, and it vibrates all day. Now, those, those machines don't exist anymore because they've been proven worthless. So that wouldn't exist today. The other thing is the gym was only open for men on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Women trained on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That's old school, man. I mean, the gym had a, a definite uh, dividing line, gender-wise. You wouldn't see that today. Um, I Actually, maybe there's some place called Curves or something. I don't know, for all women. I don't know, but I only train in a garage now, so. And it, the other thing that wouldn't exist is there were health code violations at this gym. There's no way you could have these health code violations now. There was a pool in the back of the gym, this giant swim pool that hadn't been used in over a decade. It had a, uh, a layer of algae this thick, and underneath the, the layer of algae, the protective layer of algae, were about uh, 500 dead rats that had drowned. Now, there's no way you could have even cleaned this pool. You would have had to spend thousands of dollars to get people in hazmat suits. The pool just, it was out there, and uh, we would look at it and go, whoa, that's, that's a place you don't want to go. The, the locker room, there, there, were, um, there were showers that had fungus in them that was so bad, people warned me that if you get this fungus in your toes, You'll have athlete's foot for the rest of your life. There's no cure for it. Wear shower galoshes, dude. This shower was so full of mildew and algae, there were frogs living in it. One frog was so familiar with the uh, gym members that it had a name, Charlie. Could you imagine going to a gym right now with a mascot frog named Charlie? No, this gym existed in another place in time. Here's another thing that existed in another place in time. UHF TV, man. We had uh, Hank Renner doing big time wrestling in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I trained with those wrestlers. Now, Rocky Johnson, the most famous of the wrestlers, I don't think I heard he had been at the gym, but I'd never seen Rocky. His son became The Rock, but I did see Rocky Johnson uh, ride his horse around my house. It was, uh, oh, that's Rocky Johnson. But I did train with some of the other wrestlers uh, Manuel Cruz, Pedro Morales, Kenji Shibuya. There were others. And uh, they, they would train for like six hours a day. But this is back in the 70s, man, before we had training reduced to a science. Like four hours of their five hours of training, they were just talking. Boom, 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 talking. So uh, I enjoyed training with them, though. They were very colorful, louder than life, entertaining. And uh, they could tell I was just a little kid, you know, 13 years old. And so uh, by the time I was 14, I had gotten out of Olympic weightlifting. I saw this life-changing documentary called Pumping Iron. You know, Arnold, and I wanted to be like Arnold, and there were other bodybuilders. I wanted to be like Robbie Robinson, Frank Zane, uh, Mike Mensner. Uh, the bodybuilder who had the most amazing physique that I had ever seen in my life, even to this day, he was French, I think originally from uh, Africa. His name was Serge Nubre. I never saw anyone built like that. So I felt like I was going to have to become like Serge Nubre, or I would just be a tomato with four toothpicks sticking out of me. I'm more built like Mike Mensner, though. I don't have a Serge Nubre uh, body type. But um, so I couldn't go to Walt's gym because I wanted to train six days a week. This is what the bodybuilders were doing. So I. I got out of Walt's gym and went to the weight room. It was called the weight room. Kevin O'Connell uh, was the owner. And there I trained with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, Phil Filipiano was a dude. People say he looked like me. He was a linebacker for the Raiders. This would have been about 1977. People say I looked like Phil Filipiano. 
I trained with John Matusak. He was a giant. Uh, he passed away at a pretty early age. Uh, Matusak was very friendly to me. Uh, loud, loud guy, larger than life guy. Loveless. Again, he would just tell stories all day long. This is back in the day when professional athletes would love to talk. I mean, now it's a science. Oh, I'm working out, dude. I can't talk. You know, squats, squats, squats. So. Um, I trained with these dudes, these professional athletes in the 70s, and they taught me four important things. One of the things they taught me is I could never have a 9 to 5 job where I'm in an office. I'll go crazy. I need to have physical resistance training every day or I'll go, I'll go into madness. There's something about grabbing a barbell or a dumbbell or for me, I like the tactile feel of grabbing a kettlebell. That's, that's what I've been training with the last decade. Uh, I need to do that. I can't be in an office. I'll go, I'll go nuts. And that's one thing they taught me. The second thing they taught me is storytelling. I love telling stories. These athletes love uh, telling these long, elongated stories. You know, one uh, wrestler at Walt's gym, he was suing someone, and an attorney would go into the locker room with a tape recorder, and they would be in there for hours. And this wrestler would just give a chronicle of some mishap, and it would take hours. The attorney would be writing notes. It would Who would do that in a public venue like a locker room today? It was another place in time. So they taught me the importance of storytelling. The third thing I, I realized is I liked these athletes because in a way they were misfits. They couldn't do conventional things in society. They, they weren't cut out for it. And I, I connected with that notion of being a misfit. I was going to have to do something uh, off the beaten track. And uh, the fourth thing I learned is uh, be really careful of alcohol. Because, man, these athletes, they were so, wrestlers, football players, they were so amazing on days, you know, on most days. But if they drank the night before and had a hangover, they looked like uh, dead amphibians and their eyeballs looked like two giant hard-boiled eggs. And they were, they were just worthless in the gym. I was always wary of alcohol. I mean, if you talk to my wife, she'll tell you like once a year for my birthday, I'll get pesto pizza with a peanut butter milk stout. There's only one beer I like and it's called Stout. I like the name of it. I like the thick, crazy taste of it, but I don't drink a lot of it, man. I'll tell you what, one tall glass of Stout might be 400 calories. So they taught me uh, that as well. And, and so it's so strange. I didn't become a professional athlete. But I became a professor, uh, an English professor, and being an English professor, I, I enjoy some of the qualities that I learned from those athletes. I mean, I'm, I'm not working a nine to five job. I have time to train every day. And I have a job that incorporates a lot of storytelling in my class. Because if you can't tell a story to your students, you can't sell uh, a, an idea to your students. Stories are powerful for selling ideas. Stories are powerful for sucking people into your world. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to connect with them at all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever trained with professional athletes? Have you learned anything from them? Any wisdom? What to do? What not to do? All right, well, I got to go do my taxes now. This is going to be fun. It's going to be about as fun as having a root canal. Yeah! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'm out.